What's up, guys? Clip Beats, no script, off the rip. Now, this is my first time checking out Ricky Gervais, Gervais uh, at the Golden Globes 2020, all of his bits chain. I'm guessing that means a compilation. Um, I've seen his face somewhere before. I don't know if it was in a movie or something, but I know his face from somewhere. I just can't put my finger on it. Everybody highly suggested for me to check out Ricky. I'm going to say Ricky Gervais. Uh, it looks like Ricky Gervais. Uh, I'm going to do my best to check this out. Uh, YouTube will probably block the video, so I'll probably have to put like copyrights, but it's going to say copyrights because people have uh, OCD and they get upset when the <laughs> copyrights goes over the little box. So just a heads up. I love you guys. If you want more Ricky Gervais on this channel, it's simple. Just subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see, and I'll get to it right away. Let's go. Come on, YouTube. Don't block this on me. You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, <laughs> NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello? <laughs> that was actually very dope of him to say. He's like, yo, I I've said shit on Twitter, but I haven't gotten fired. The Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello? <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. And they've no idea what Twitter is. So, I got offered this gig by fax. So, let's go out with a bang. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all going to die soon, and there's no sequel. So, yeah, remember that. Um, but you all look lovely, all doled up. You came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, uh. um, Shush. He said shush! Tom Hanks! Legend, he's like, come on! So, no. Shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, okay? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone. Uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... Yeah, that, that, that's like the mafia table. I'd probably stay away from uh, you know, saying anything bad about them, but you know, do, do you. Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, oh! I love you, man. Don't have me whacked. Um, but tonight isn't just about the people in front of the camera. In this room, he said, baby Yoda. are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all... They're so fucking stuck up, dude. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Dude, they are seriously becoming offended. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Like, that's a face of, like, yo, fucking shut your mouth, dude. <laughs> he call he's calling people out, dude. How. You know, Holly Weird is known for this shit, and he's calling them out on their stage. This is legendary. How do? How am I just being introduced to this now? Many talented people of color were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, dude, Tom Hanks. I'm so, I'm pausing. This is a breakdown channel. That's what I do. I'll get copyright striked if not. Dude, shout out to Ricky Gervais. Or, it's got to be Gervais for speaking up and saying real shit. It's not even about jokes. Look at her face. She's like, oh, shit. Fifth time. So, be very racist. So, fifth time. So, 
We were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people. And I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Holy <laughs> Do you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. You had to make your own way in with your own plane. He's making references back to the, uh, the log. You had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. But, m seriously, most films are awful. Lazy. Remakes. Sequels. I've heard a rumour that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that'd just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's got to be this one, then. I honestly have no idea what that is. All the best actors have jumped to Netflix and HBO, you know. And the actors who just do Hollywood movies now do fantasy adventure nonsense. They wear masks and capes and really tight costumes. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got, a, have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. Strip chunky. No point. We know he'd win that. Um, Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> Even Robert De Niro was laughing at that. And he, Martin Scorsese was like, yeah, that's a good one. Right. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, great movie. Uh, great movie. Right. Great movie. It my, was good. My, my, it was great. Uh, the only thing about it, yeah, I'm going to talk. You ever, if, you, if you ever watch the movie, there's a part where Robert De Niro goes down to the, uh, there's like a fish market or a market in general because something happened with his daughter. And he beats the shit out of the owner of the store. And when he comes out, He's like going to stomp on this guy's, I don't know if it was his hand or what it was, but like he's got like his arm up like this, and you can just see how stiff and old he is, but they have him like CGI to look younger. It just looks so off. Long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once upon a time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So. <laughs> So he's been catching heat for a while. Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Um, I'm gonna choke on my the water. The world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but <laughs> no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? That's so good! But Dame Judi Dench <sighs> defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play, because she, I can't do this next joke. <laughs> so good! Saying it was the role she was born to play, because she, I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg, and licking her <laughs> Furball, furball. <laughs> She's old school. Um, 
<laughs> it's the last time, who cares? He's drinking a beer, like, this is it for me, dude. Oh. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama, yeah. A superb drama. I'm noticing some people not clapping. About the importance of dignity and doing the right thing. Oh. Made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, uh. come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and... So... Can we give this man an award? Where have you been all my life? Thank you for fucking shitting all over. It's not even, it's, it's speaking the truth about Hollyweird. Oh, I'm just like, I'm saying Hollyweird. It is Hollyweird, man. It's all. Look at all the uncomfortable people. Already three hours long. <laughs> right, let's do the first award. The first award. <laughs> the first award is for best actor in a television series, musical, or comedy. To present the award are a couple of actors off the telly, what can I say? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Yo, dude, that was ruthless. That was ruthless, and that's what we need more of. Dude, shout out to Ricky for jumping up and doing this shit. If there's more content like this, do me a favor. Please look, comment down below. I'd love to have you subscribe so I know in my algorithm that you guys want more. Um, and it'll help me, you know, get to it faster. I got a feeling this is going to get copyrighted to pieces, though. I'm going to have to block out the video and mute some audio or something. Something's going to happen. In a little while, we're going to see a, a short clip from The Irishman. Um, it's 88 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Still having a good time? Good. As you know, the meal tonight was all vegetables as are the members of the Hollywood Foreign Press. <laughs> Please welcome their president, Lorenzo Soria. Hello, we're back. Um, Knives Out has three nominations tonight. Yeah. See what can happen if you don't dress people up as cats. It's, it's that easy. I feel like he got a talking to in the back. He came out a little bit softer. Hello, welcome back. But the glass is becoming more and more empty. Um, I've got nothing negative to say about these next two presenters because the big one could snap me in half. So please welcome Zoe Kravitz and Jason Momoa. <laughs> Amazing. Um, a lot of controversy. Uh, about our next category. No female directors were nominated this year. Not one. I mean, that, that's bad. Um, I have, genuinely, I've had a word with the Hollywood Foreign Press, and they've guaranteed that will never happen again. Um, no, because working with all the major studios, um, they've agreed to go back the way things were a few years ago, when they didn't even hire women directors. And that will solve the problem. <laughs> You're welcome. Kill me. We're nearly done. Jesus. Three, it's already. Right, um, last one, last one. Come on, guys. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box. A movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. <laughs> he said, I just said the joke, but you did it. You lived it. Please welcome Sandra. You, you didn't say nothing to anybody this whole time. 
Yo, sh dude, this is. Hold up. That's it. Good night. Thank you. Please donate to Australia. Have a great time. Get drunk. Take your drugs. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see, dude. You got to roast them. Oh, man. And, like, don't get me wrong, dude. I'm a, I'm a fan of a lot of actors. Uh, I'm a huge movie buff. But, dude, all the bullshit that's been happening is the same thing with the music industry. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I, I, I don't really get too political. I focus on my music and I leave shit alone. But that's also, like, me turning a blind eye to shit that I probably should speak up on. But I can't because I lose my career. Same position they are in. But, man, with the things that they have done, oh, my God. And for Ricky Gervais, I, I want to say his name right, Ricky Gervais, to get on stage and literally roast everybody for and calling them out for this bullshit. Yo, dude, it's a standing ovation for me. I don't do standing ovations often, man. Oh, my God. This, I don't see how YouTube lets me keep this up. I'm going to try to get to uh, uploading this as fast as I can because this might have been one of my favorite moments. Of like actually, I I, lo I love stand up routines and stuff, but this made people uncomfortable. You could see their faces where they were like, "Holy shit! Like this is too far." But it's not because this is what comedy is supposed to do. It's supposed to call you out on your bullshit, and if you take offense to it, well, it means you're guilty of something. Thanks for watching with me. If you want more Ricky Gervais, it's easy. Uh, just subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what's next. I love you. Stay safe. Have a wonderful week slash weekend. If anybody needs me, don't forget my Instagram is linked in the description down below. Anybody going through anxiety, depression, panic attacks, PTSD, addiction, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I, I know what it's like to go through that shit alone. I am no doctor. I cannot solve your problems. I just, I leave myself open because I would not have this channel if it wasn't for you or all these amazing artists that you guys point me to. I would never have heard about Ricky before uh, without you guys letting me know because he's been requested a lot. And I, I, I didn't know who he was. So, like, this is the issue is, like, if I only hear it a few times, like, I'll kind of, like, I won't say let it go. I'll be like, okay, I'll get to it. But, like, dude, spam me. Spam me and make sure to subscribe because that's the only way that I see it. Because I'll see people make suggestions, but nobody subscribes. And I'm like, okay, well, then they, they don't really want to see that, you know. So, fuck, dude, this was good, though. This might have been one of the best pieces. I'm, I'm going to post this first to make sure everyone sees it. But. I got a feeling YouTube's going to copyright the shit out of it. I love you guys. Stay safe. Oh, I was also going to say, if you're not comfortable reaching out to me on Instagram, my Discord is up and running. Oop, oop, up and running. You're more than welcome to join. What am I doing with my hand right here? It's like I'm pointing. Um, we have a mental health forum. We got general chat. We got people telling jokes. We got people discussing music. Whatever you want is there. It's a great place to go network, and it's free to sign up. So just you're more than welcome to join. Uh, also, I'm doing paid for donations over on Patreon now. No more are being done here on YouTube. If you donate to me on YouTube, I usually send it right back to you uh, if it's for a request because I can't do them with YouTube. They are they're so petty with anything that we can upload these days. So Patreon fixes that problem because I upload it there and then I put it onto YouTube. That's how it goes. But I love you. Stay safe. This was very good. This is what I mean about... Let me know what's out there that I don't know about that's going to shock the shit out of me. I did not know this happened. This was pretty recently. Dude, shout out to Ricky again for fucking putting everybody on blast. We need more of this. I love you guys. Follow me to the next one. I'll see you there.